Welcome to this session on open form tutorials. Here we'll see how to install open form on Windows 10. In all the tutorials, we'll have a screen like this. There are two sections to it. On the left hand side, you will see what you must do. Basically, these are actions that you may have to read and execute on your computer, or they might be commands which you have to copy and paste on your computer. On the right hand side, you will see uh, snapshots or visuals of what will happen when you carry out this action. So you can use it to verify if you have done it right or wrong. In this slide, you see that these are a set of actions and these are the corresponding uh, display that is seen on your computer. Firstly, you need to update your uh, Windows operating system. Uh, you need a Windows 10 uh, or higher. Even in that, you might have to apply the latest updates. So go to uh, uh, Windows Start Settings and Windows Update and check for updates. And in that, you have to click on this Install up Updates. After that, you have to in, uh, restart Windows. Usually, a uh, couple of times it might require you to um, uh, um, till the final updates are installed. Uh, finally, after all the installation is completed, you can check the current version of Windows. If you type uh, um, Windows logo key plus R and type WinVer, that is Windows version, and then select OK, you will see the versions of the version of the current Windows operating system. Firstly, for uh, installing OpenFoam, we need to uh, use this uh, utility called as PowerShell. PowerShell is a command line utility in Windows. So to do that, you type for PowerShell on the Windows taskbar. The taskbar is here. And uh, once you type PowerShell, you will find the PowerShell Windows PowerShell app. Instead of clicking on it directly, you must right click on it and run as administrator. That is very important. Right click and run as administrator. Then it will ask you for permissions if uh, it can allow you to make changes, accept yes. And then you will get a window shell or a command shell like this called as Windows PowerShell with a prompt. This is called as shell prompt. On that, you have to type the following commands. Sometimes you might find that the Windows uh, uh, terminal is having very small fonts. If you can't see them, then you can right click on the stop small blue button icon here, and then increase the font size by going to properties. And then the font tab, you can select the size of the font. Now, once you are satisfied with that, in that Windows prompt, which is C colon Windows system 32 greater than symbol. Up to this is called as a prompt. On that, you have to type the following WSL space minus minus install. So WSL space minus minus install. Now note that this greater than symbol means that this is a prompt. You should not type the greater than symbol on your, this is greater than symbol is already there. Even here, uh, after a couple of, uh, once you start installing uh, uh, WSL, uh, WSL stands for Windows Subsystem Linux. So on which you can install Ubuntu or any other flavor of Linux. So uh, when you do this for the first time, again, you, you will not get it installed completely. You might have to do it a couple of times. At the end, you will see a message like this. If you see the, uh, the changes will not be affected unless the system is rebooted, then you have to reboot your uh, system again and then repeat from here to this WSL minus install. And then keep doing this unless you this message, reboot messages, uh, reboot message goes away. Now we have to do um, installation of Ubuntu. So once the WSL is ready, we have we can go and install Ubuntu. For that, you have to go to the uh, app called as Microsoft Store. On the Microsoft Store app, search for uh, Ubuntu and pick the latest version. The current latest version is 22.04. And if you are uh, seeing this video later, 
it might be a different version. Prefer to use an LTS version. LTS means long time support. So the current LTS version is 22.04.1 LTS. So select that and say get, and this will uh, download the basic of um, uh, the Linux operating system, and then click on open. So um, when you click on open, then the whatever was downloaded goes into this uh, unpacking the distro. So if you click on this uh, button here, you can see the progress of what is happening. So it takes uh, quite some time to uh, unpack Linux and then it will ask you for certain things to be carried out. The first thing that um, uh, comes up during setup of Ubuntu is it will ask you for the language that you want to use, select English. And then it will ask you for certain configuration options for the mount location. Just leave this as default, nothing to change here. Then uh, in all these things, uh, this is a uh, terminal. So you cannot use your mouse to move up and down. You cannot click on this and move up and down. So what you have to do is to move the cursor keys. The keyboard cursor keys up, down, left, right. You can use them and move your cursor from top to down. Once you make all these collection, uh, selections, at the bottom, you will see this uh, when this cursor comes to the bottom uh, done uh, section, then that will change to green. So when it changes to green, hit enter and this setup with this settings will get accepted. Then in the next screen, it will ask you for your name uh, and a username. A name is a full name. You can have spaces in them like P Sundar is my full name. Uh, which is called as a display name, but a username should always be in small letters and there should be no spaces or special characters here. So keep a short name, usually your first name or your last name as your username. After that, you have to select a password, choose a strong pa password as usual and confirm the password. Again, at the end of the screen, you will see a, a done section. Move down using your cursor to the done section and accept, uh, press enter. Now we're going to launch Ubuntu. So once all this, this, this could take quite some time, depending on your net connection and installation time, all this installation of uh, Ubuntu can take uh, uh, about 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes more if it is a slower network. So once the Ubuntu installation is complete, then you have to launch the Ubuntu. Now Ubuntu, remember, was an app. Ubuntu was an app. And we did this installation inside that. And once the installation complete, you can search for the Ubuntu app in the uh, Windows taskbar. So you go to Windows taskbar here and say Ubuntu, and you will see the Ubuntu app here. So once you select the Ubuntu app and launch it, you will get a terminal which looks like this. This is the Ubuntu launch uh, terminal. So this is a small window. So this window again has a prompt. So in Ubuntu, by default, the prompt has got your username, which you selected uh, in the previous screen. I had selected a username as Sundar. So my username comes as uh, Sundar here. And the computer name, whatever name that you had given to your computer, maybe in Windows installation or here, that will, or some random number will um, attach to your um, uh, computer. So in Linux, the prompt ends with a dollar symbol. Like in uh, Windows, the prompt shell was, a prompt was symbol was a greater than symbol. Here it is a dollar symbol. And in this tutorial and all other tutorials, if you see a dollar symbol, that means you have to type this uh, text on a window uh, Ubuntu uh, terminal window. This is called as a Ubuntu terminal. This is the Ubuntu terminal. On this Ubuntu terminal, you have to type these commands. Like for example, I can type sudo apt update. So I go to the terminal, I type sudo apt update. So first time when you uh, install Ubuntu, the latest uh, updates will be installed if you do this. So when I type this and type hit enter, it will ask for my password. This is only one time I need to type password. So I'll type my password now. 
So then when if you need to have the network connection, so once the network connection is there, then it will download all the uh, required updates. It checks for all the dependencies and tells you whether anything needs to be updated. So it says that all packages are up to date because I had already updated my Ubuntu. In your case, the first time when you do, it will ask for several things to be done. So this is just initial update but this actually does not install the packages. To install the packages, you need to type the second command, sudo apt minus y upgrade, sudo apt minus y upgrade. So first is update, second is upgrade. So in this case, I hit enter, it will not ask for a password. And in my case, since I've already updated Ubuntu recently, there is nothing to upgrade and nothing to newly install. So, uh, but in your case, you when you do it for the first time, a lot of packages will be downloaded and updated. Again, that will take that can take about 15, 20 minutes or half an hour or more. Remember that don't type dollar. Dollar means the prompt, and you're not you don't have to type that. So you just need when you whenever you see a dollar symbol, it means the commands that appear here have to be typed on this uh, terminal window. Now we are going to go and install OpenFOAM. Now we have got Linux uh, system running on Windows as a Windows app. Inside that, we are going to install OpenFOAM. Now, a lot of things, uh, instead of typing all these things, you can do a copy pasting. Now you can copy it from the, uh, this slides. Uh, there is a link to the uh, slides of this uh, video given in this uh, section below as well as on your Moodle course. So what you can do is you can open those slides and copy this text. So I'm going to do that now. I can copy this text like that. I hit Control C for copy. And then I go to my terminal window. On the terminal window, I can type everything, but it's a lot to type. So just make sure you copy the entire line and then go to your terminal window and on your mouse, click on the right button. So as you do the right button, whatever you copied there will get pasted here. So copy is control C and paste is right button on the terminal window. So then I can hit enter. Then it will do this. So similarly, once this command is done, you have to copy this command and paste, this command paste, and this command paste. So all these things, it's easier if you uh, get used to this control C and right click. Most of the tutorials that you see here or you see on the web will tell you a series of commands to be executed. So if you go to uh, Google and search for a certain help that you want, they'll tell you, please do these, these, these things, things. Instead of actually typing all those things, what you can do is just copy them and paste them using right mouse button. Once you have done uh, installation of, so this actually installs app, get install open form, installs the uh, latest version. Currently the latest version of open form is uh, version 10. Uh, there are actually two flavors of open form, one from openform.org and other from openform.com. One is org, other is com. We'll be using uh, org here, but the uh, uh, for certain cases, you might also want to try the com version. And you can, uh, as it, it'll all use a very similar command, except for instead of this, you will be using some other repository. So this is the location where you can download the uh, open form from this repository. For openform.com, there will be a corresponding different repository here. Now, firstly, once openform is installed correctly, we have to set up the uh, openform only for the first time. Again, for that, copy paste this command using uh, control C and then paste it on your this one. Paste it on your uh, Linux terminal. After that, again, you have to do this source home dot bash rc. Note that in many of these cases, this dot is very important. So that's why it is better you copy and paste and not just 
uh, type it out yourself. If you're typing out, make sure that you don't miss out all these dots and uh, quotes, and these are uh, very sensitive. Now to check if the open form has been installed correctly, again, go to the terminal and type simple form minus space minus help. So note this uh, cap F is capital and there is a space here. So if I type on the terminal simple form minus help, it will tell you the instructions how to use simple form. Uh, We're not going to tell you about how to use simple form now. This is just to make sure that all that open form has been installed and the initial setup has been uh, done properly. If this does not work, if it says as command not found, you have to do this properly and go back to the previous step and make sure you have done all of these things and then come to this and you should get this. Now we also need another application called as X server. Now X server is a um, uh, application which runs on Windows which can display uh, graphic applications of Linux. So like if you open a Windows, uh, you open your Word or you open your PowerPoint, you get a graphic user interface. Now the graphic user interface from Linux, if you want to display it on Windows, you need to do this first. Now all the, for running open form, you don't need any graphic user inter interface, but for displaying the results using ParaView, we need this, uh, uh, X server. So what you do is to this called uh, VC X server. You can get the latest version from here, sourceforge.net. And the current latest version is the 64. Uh, if you check this video at some time later, you might find a different version. So whatever it is, just download the latest version and uh, do the usual installation. After installation is complete, go to the Windows taskbar and type X launch. So I'm going to the Windows taskbar now and typing X launch. So you can see this X launch app. So you have to click on the X launch app. So when you click on the X, it'll ask you first time, it'll ask you whether uh, you, you can allow changes, allow access to this. So please allow access. And then, uh, sorry, this, uh, sorry, all access will come during installation of um, uh, uh, X server. Uh, once that is, you have to allow access. And after you do this, you have to launch the uh, X server, uh, X launch. So X launch also a couple of questions it'll ask you. Just use the default settings. And finally, you will get this uh, extra settings. I'll show you how. In the extra settings only, you have to make some changes. So I type go to X launch. So it first asked me for multiple windows. I just accept the default. Start is also default. And in the extra setting, I just need to uncheck this native OpenGL and check the disable access control and say next and then finish. So this means your X server is nothing else you can see now, but the X server is running. You can check the X server down here. If you go down and check for this, uh, this one, you will see this X launch uh, server that is running here. Now, come to the, to open Linux application that is Linux uh, graphic user application. You have to uh, come to the Ubuntu terminal and copy paste the following. Note this entire thing is one single line. It is just coming in two lines here. You should not give a, a new line here. It's just one single line. So just copy this entire thing from the slides and then paste it using right click on your Ubuntu shell. So when you paste this, you will not say anything. Then you have to say dot home slash dot bashers. Again, again, there is no output for that. This, you just have to do this. Now, once this is done, all your Linux graphic user interface now will appear in your Windows X launch. So these are two operating systems. So whatever is coming from um, Linux has to be displayed here. And that's why we are using this X launch. There are some other helper applications which also you need to uh, install. Uh, these are useful when you do analysis using OpenFORM. Uh, some of them are G-edit. These are um, 
files. Uh, this, uh, this is basically a file editor. You can use it to edit uh, files. Uh, then you can also use uh, install GNU plot and GNU plot X11, which is used to plot some simple graphs. And then this is a MPEG player. So just do an install of all these things on your Ubuntu terminal. Now, once all this is done, you can check if your graphics is working and go to your Ubuntu terminal prompt dollar and type paraview. Then you will see a graphic user interface like this. I'll show you that. So I go to a terminal window, type paraview and hit enter. One minute, I am running two different applications. That's why this problem is there. I'll... Yes, so I had uh, started two terminals, two X launches by mistake. That's why it didn't work. Now, when you have a single X launch application, which is uh, running here, you come, come to this and type, go to your um, uh, Linux Ubuntu uh, prompt and type Paraview. And that will open this Paraview window. Okay, so this is the Paraview window. You can where we can use it to visualize. We'll have a separate tutorial on this later. I'm just exiting this. Okay, so that's the end of this talk. To summarize, uh, we saw that we need to update Ubuntu first, uh, uh, update Windows first, get the latest patches and bug fixes, then install WSL Ubuntu, and then open form and related applications. Thank you.